Should you ever go off to do your own offshoot or work on another retro nostalgia based game show? Okay. They will in fact kill you. Oh, they I will hunt you down. <laughs> D- Dueling decades will murder you. Dueling decades. All right, guys. So I have control of the board. I get to select our next category. Uh, let's go over to television. All right, so my television selection, you know, we're in the summer months. It's the week I had June 17th, uh, the week I had June 11th through the 17th of 1972. Everything was in reruns. So much like Man Crush did last week, got a little creative. And I'm thinking, all right, television. And then I come across this story about an actual television. So we'll go over to the Journal Gazette in Mattoon, Illinois, June 14th, 1972, Cartridge TV in debut. Boogie and Brando have been plucked from the dynasty film cans of the late, late movies and plugged into the newest thing in home entertainment. The See It At Your Leisure Cartridge Television. Sears Roebuck is already demonstrating and accepting orders for its model. Other retail firms, including Montgomery Ward, plan to have the adapted television systems within the year. The equipment for the system was developed and is being manufactured by various retailers by Cartridge Television Incorporated, which has been attracting three three deep crowds at its display at the Consumer Electronics Show this week. The company, which calls itself system cartivision has a subsidiary where they actually rent the movies to owners of the television and you can get features like bridge on the river kwai and dr strange love it says now the cartivision system was the very first video cassette recorder to have pre-recorded tapes for sale and rental this was three years before the betamax system even hit the market The cartridges stood out because often because of its design, they were actually square and had two reels stacked upon each other. One, and then there was two different types. They had black tapes, which were for sale only, and then red tapes. Now the red ones, those were the ones that were for rental for movies. Now the red cassettes also kind of had an unusual feature. You could only play them once. If you wanted to rent it again, you physically, if you wanted to watch the movie again, rather, you had to bring the tape back to the place you rented it from. They would use a special machine to rewind it, and then you could watch it again. And, of course, you'd have to re-rent it anywhere from 3 to $7, the article says. But you actually couldn't rewind the tapes yourself. So I give you the cartridge television. Put one in your home today, June 1972. <laughs> All right, Man Crush, what did you bring for the television round? All right, I didn't bring a hot product to the television round, but I will echo something <laughs> that Mark said. Uh, out of all the episodes I've done on this show, this had to be the weakest television offering of all time. So I agree there. Of course, like Mark said, uh, you know, we're almost this summer. We might as well be in the summer at this point. So there's nothing new coming out. There's nothing ending. And it appears that all major sporting events were over. The NBA Finals, they took place in May. The NHL finals took place in May and major league baseball was under the 1981 strike. So that's out. And I missed a boxing event, boxing match by one day, Uh, even Saturday night live. uh, They were playing a repaint from uh, 1978 with Walter Matthau. So after much deliberation and much newspaper flipping, I decided to go with ABC's Saturday late night movie which is a complete bizarre airing. I'd expect this to be playing on like USA's up all night or like night flight or something like that. I don't think, well, USA's up all night didn't come out for another like seven or eight years and night flight was right around there. Uh, But it wasn't, this was, this was on ABC and you would not expect this title to be on there. This is the world television premiere of that man bolts. (laughs) <laughs> look at their faces i'll give you the tagline from this one uh got a super hot delivery bolts on the call big bad and beautiful the man got it all and he's bonded okay 
<laughs> I know like not much needs to be said about this movie. You guys, uh, you've all seen it, but I'll, I'll give you some details anyway, just in case you've forgotten how good this one is. Uh, that man bolt, uh, of course it stars Fred Williamson and, uh, it's a mixed bag film. And like, I don't know why, but I love when a film tries to incorporate multiple genres into one film. Like, let's just put everything in there. So in this one, you got black exploitation, you got martial arts and a little espionage. You got uh, Fred Williamson. He plays Jefferson Bolt, who he appears to be like some sort of like James Bond type, which if you tell by the tagline with he's bonded, that's yeah. the, you get it. <laughs> I get it. Uh, he's also he's an expert in Kung Fu, naturally. Uh, and most of these black exploitation movies were done independently, at least the ones that featured uh, Fred Williamson after this one. To so this one, on the other hand, this was actually done by Universal Studios. So I would say after watching this one, it looks much better than his later films. Yet, according to Fred Williamson, Universal bought this one up, though, because they, they signed him to do three of them and they only made one. And this is this is that one right here. So if you're up late Saturday night and you're in the mood for evil syndicates, mm-hmm. ass kicking kung fu, binocular sunglasses, car chases, Tom Jones karaoke, having sex <laughs> with other women right after you just watched your ex get murdered, who you also just banged, uh, ninja throwing stars, <laughs> kills with broken glass, weapons of mass destruction, dudes named Spider and briefcases full of counterfeit cash, then tune in to ABC at 11.30 p.m. Saturday night for That Man Bolt. That sounds amazing. It's actually, oh, it bad. was not that bad. Uh, <laughs> production quality is there. It's, it was a decent movie. It puts, <clears throat> uh, puts Fred Williamson on the map. This is very early Fred Williamson. Really? Yeah, like dr- Fred Williamson, man. No, this is like directly after like his Northwestern football days. Wow. So this is uh, pretty early on. Oh, and the other uh, big things from this one, uh, Bolt, uh, Jefferson Bolt. He also attended MIT, and uh, he was uh, popular for killing three men in Rio de Janeiro in 1968. Makes sense. I didn't get many details on that, but that's his claim to fame. All right, Drew Zachman, what did you bring for the television round? So uh, speaking of cramming in multiple genres into one television series. uh, So I I have quite possibly one of the best TV shows ever made. Uh, This show debuted on June 19th, 1992, and was an hour long show that basically checked off all of these boxes. It had drama, martial arts, adventure, humor, mystery, and most importantly, secret societies. Now, the show follows Jonathan Raven, who is a ninja-trained former Special Forces agent who retires to Hawaii to search for his long-lost son. I mean, everybody would do that. That's right. Father's Day. He's a good father. Um, Avoiding assassins. Yeah. Well, that's all he would get. Avoiding assassins sent to kill him by his former associates in the Black Dragon clan, he uses his skills to help those in need. And he's assisted by his former military buddy turns eccentric private investigator because it makes sense. Uh, Herman <laughs> Jablonski, played by my favorite fall guy, Lee Majors. Uh, there weren't any other fall guys. I just wanted to say Lee Majors was my favorite fall guy. Also, I just wanted to say fall guy because I love that show. Uh, anyway, the show I'm talking about, which you guys probably already know, is Raven, which had a, an impressive long run, actually, going all the way into 1993. Uh <laughs> and I, I read the plot to this, and it's rather elaborate. So, so here we go. Um, well, actually, before I even get into that, right? So uh, here's a question I have, and I don't know if the show delves into this because I didn't watch all the episodes or any of them. But he, so this guy was a Black Dragon Clan member, but he quit them and went into the Special Forces. Then the Black Dragon Clan tries to kill him afterwards. So. My question is, right, he left his previous employer, right? Now, if you leave your employer, do they all try to kill you? Or, like, did he leave and go to, like, a competitor? Like, like he signed, like, a non-compete and then went to a competitor? Like, like I don't know. Uh, In the early just, 90s, I think that was standard. Uh, maybe. And, uh, and, they're, and then they're like, well, you got to find employment outside of the industry, at least for one year per your non-compete and then you can join the special forces i don't know maybe he didn't give two weeks notice and they're like dude 
we need time to backfill you and get your replacement trained up. There needs to be some kind of like transition here. We're gonna we're angry and we're gonna kill you. So I don't know I don't know what happened, but that's that's a weird company to work for. So I can see why he quit. Um, but anyway, um, I, I honestly don't know if those things were discussed in Raven. Now I actually have extra questions about the show, so maybe I might sit down to watch it. Um, and and maybe that actually would be a better show than what was produced. But anyway, uh, Raven, that's what I got. I would have watched it. <laughs> Because that actually sounds mm. not that bad. All right, Dave Schultz, let's hear your verdict on the television round. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> you laugh. You should see my notes right now. I'm just like, bottom of the barrel. This is like some <laughs> terrible <laughs> shit right here. This is summer um, months, bro. What are you going to get? Yeah, the, this is this. The rough. fact that Drew had really a show rough. that started in the summer is yeah. just the kiss of death that, right there. It's like, remarkable. oh, this show, uh, the pilot, <clears throat> it was okay. Uh, Let's start it in June, right? <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. Oh, my God. The, uh, all right. So, Mark came with 1972, the Cartridge TV, which sounds just fucking awful. Sounds so bad. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how popular that really could have been. I mean, with the price point it was back then and, and all the hassles you had to go through just to rent a movie <laughs> nobody even had yeah. gas in 1972 yeah. like like <laughs> i gotta return this tape to get rewound fuck got no yeah. the fact that you've never even heard of it should tell you alone how popular it was <laughs> yeah yeah right i mean this i mean i don't know like maybe it's got like an important i don't know note in history because it's like a precursor to what we all came to know they were well, working like, on the the beta and vcr for years it yeah just okay I, out, listen so. i follow you but I'm, I'm trying to look for any kind of ray of sunshine with this <laughs> dave, dave's trying dave's trying over there <laughs> yeah i I'm, I'm like straining i think i just fucking pulled my quad with you guys <laughs> well listen to, like, we had a week and it's mm. a summer television so i figured yeah, I get coming you. in I, this was yeah i'm I know. just telling the people at home like i kind of expected us all to have a pretty weak television right? yeah, was, and i think was, that's going to happen for the summer it was either that or a rerun of Sanford and Son. Yeah. So, and it I just mean, doesn't feel right uh, bringing a rerun. No. It never no. feels right. I mean, you guys had weak uh, uh, information to pull from. I mean, I had Raven, so I lucked yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. No, you had, that was a, we had to go dive in deep. I mean, that shit's everywhere, Raven. <laughs> okay, so let's turn to 81, the Saturday late night movie, That Man Bolt. All I can say is the poster looks really cool. You know it, what I mean? Like it does. Yeah, it's one of those things where you were kind of selling it to me, and then I couldn't help myself. I had to look it up real quick. I'm like, well, that actually looks remotely interesting, and and yeah, the artwork uh, was fantastic. It's hard to find uh, though. I'll, anybody okay. looking for it out there, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. How did you find it? I'm not going to say. Okay, black market. <laughs> Allegedly, maybe. Okay. Uh, Drew with 92 Raven. That's right. Uh, I, okay, Drew, I did want to let you know something, though. Now, should you ever go off to do your own offshoot or work on another retro nostalgia-based game show, Okay, they will, in fact, kill you. Oh, They I... will hunt you down. <laughs> du Dueling decades will murder you. Okay. Yeah, Mark will definitely be like in my backyard waiting to stab oh, me. We, we will not do it. We have ninjas that take care of yeah. these. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's contracted out. I'm gonna, I'm um, gonna be one of those like Facebook accounts, man. Crush. That's always uh like dueling underscore decades. Oh, fucking. <laughs> <clears throat> or like God, D yeah. period ooling decades. For the people that yeah. don't know, if you're not on following our uh, our social media, just go to facebook.com forward slash dueling decades. But we get imposter accounts all the time. So let me throw this out there because we never really talked about it on here, and I'll do this fast. If you ever get a message from us or a friend request, it's not us because we don't do that. And then we're not trying to uh, give away $5,000 in Bitcoin or whatever bullshit thing that these guys are doing. Definitely not us. So if you do see that and you do get a friend request, do like the people did the, the last couple times. They sent it directly to us and said, this person's impersonating you. And then we sent it to Facebook and Facebook completely fucks us and over. They do nothing. Yep. And they do nothing forever. So yeah. just so you know. Just look for little differences, like Drew said. If it says dueling decades with like seven <laughs> L's, not us. It's not us. Fuckers. Okay. Uh, now we've got that straight away. Watch yeah. out for dueling decades. That's just dueling decades on too much medication. 
Uh, all right, guys, here's how I'm deciding the victor. Whether you think it's fair or not, it doesn't matter because I'm the almighty judge. Uh, it came down to either between 81 with Man Crush and 92 with Drew. But because even though he won't reveal his source, I got to give props to Man Crush for actually watching the movie that he talked about. And Drew, the premise sounds great, but you just threw out there. You're like, man, eh, I've never even seen it. Well, so, so I, had the, I would have to watch an entire se- Remember, that show went all the way into 1993. So yeah, there was like whew. there was like 20 episodes of that show. So I can't watch 20 mm-hmm. episodes. You only had to watch one movie. It's horseshit. Did you even watch one episode? Uh, my no. uh, my <laughs> internet my internet broke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now you sound like me and my freaking spelling bee in fourth grade. <laughs> How the tables have turned, my friend. <laughs> no, I, I got to give uh, Man Crush this round. Like you have to you have to watch some of these things because they you if you do the research on them and you look into them, some of them are very enticing. Like this movie, I probably wouldn't have because I'm telling you, it was a difficult movie to find. It took me like an hour to, to dig it up and I had it was a very skeevy location. I had to watch under incognito mode and, and that. Did you watch shit. it on a cartridge? A little cartridge no, you had to put in your TV. <laughs> no, it was worse. I had couldn't rewind. I had, I had to actually sit at my computer in the studio and watch it because where I was watching it from, I couldn't even put it on the big screen. So it was uh, it was one of those. But it's worth it. If you can find it and you're into those type of movies from the seventies, I think it's cool. You'll you'll dig it. Was there a dude with a trench coat involved? He's like, hey, man, you want to see this? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's always like uh, shitty, fat white guys that are the bad (laughs) guys and all the time. It's always it's the same thing. Um, But it's great. Go uh, go and find them. We'll be right back. 